So in this MLB news and rumors video, I want to talk about some of the latest regarding the 2023-24 MLB offseason, all of the latest involving free agency, the trade market, basically all things MLB. I'm going to be going over in this video. Let's get right into it. So the first MLB news item for today actually takes us to the Big Apple, where Matt Chapman, formerly of the Blue Jays, could be joining the pinstripes this offseason. So a Fireside Yankees on Twitter or X tweeted out, Susan Sluicer of the San Francisco Chronicle reports that the Yankees have shown interest in third baseman Matt Chapman and there is actually a link down below within this tweet uh, to empiresportsmedia.com where there is more of a um, description of this report um, through this tweet so if you want to view the link a link will be down below in the description of this video so could the Yankees be making yet again another big time splashes off season this time bringing on former division rival Matt Chapman from the Blue Jays over to the Yankees well according to this report it's very possible now as a Blue Jays fan the last couple of years I've had the privilege to see Matt Chapman play um, quite a bit. Now, Matt Chapman, defensively speaking, is a tremendous player, right? Probably the best defensive third baseman of baseball at this moment. Uh, this past year, he won his fourth career gold glove award. He also is a two-time platinum glove award winner as well. So defensively speaking, uh, Matt Chapman is probably the best defensive third baseman of baseball. Offensively speaking, though, it's a little bit uh, underwhelming slash inconsistent. Uh, this past year for Matt Chapman in Toronto, he put up a 4.4 war season, 122 hits, 17 home runs, a 240 average, 66 runs scored, 54 RBIs, 4 stolen bases, an on base of 330, 424 slugging, an OPS of 755, and an OPS plus of 108. So uh, just on paper, right, these stats don't look that terrible. But if you watch Matt Chapman play this past year, he had a tremendous start to the year offensively speaking, but then it went downhill extremely fast uh, and got worse and worse each and every month. So Matt Chapman, offensively speaking, he always leaves you wanting a a little bit more uh, historically speaking as well than the past and Matt Chapman has been uh, at his very best a 36 home run hitter uh, back in 2019 with the Athletics when he made the only all-star game of his career so uh, Matt Chapman defensively speaking is definitely a pretty good upgrade for this Yankees team to have but offensively speaking I guess this could move someone like LeMahieu to the bench uh, in more of like a utility role especially too with LeMahieu being a little bit older uh, this might not be a terrible time to transition him to sort of that role uh, on this Yankees organization so Matt Chapman could definitely come to New York and be like a 25-30 home run guy play some awesome third base and be relatively affordable i think matt chapman next year is going to probably be getting a around i want to say like a four or a five-year contract probably around that 17 to 20 million dollar mark on an average annual value basis if i could predict so uh, matt chapman as well is just going to be 31 years old in 2024 so uh, this guy definitely still has some productive years left but keep in mind with chapman once his defense falls he's not going to bring much to the table offensively speaking so uh, matt chapman if he were to go over to the bronx bombers and play for the yankees next year he could be a pretty cool uh, move for this team now would I pay this guy an arm and a leg no uh, but could this make more sense to make this roster a little bit deeper a little move LeMahieu to a utility role and sort of rock this lineup in 2024 it could very well be possible so we'll keep it on the Yankees if they're able to make a big splash or two with there still being some pretty good players available on the open market uh, perhaps they can get a player like Chapman for a bit of a discount maybe they're going to get him for like a one or a two year contract whatever the case may be uh, if it's like a one or a two year contract it doesn't really hurt whatsoever if it doesn't work out then it is what it is but I uh, could Matt Chapman be going to the Bronx Bombers this offseason and joining the Yankees, he very well could be. So shifting gears to a division rival of the Yankees, I want to talk about the Baltimore Orioles possibly signing Michael Lorenzen this offseason. So MLB trade rumors on Twitter or X tweeted out, the Baltimore Orioles have shown interest in Michael Lorenzen, and there's a link down below in this tweet uh, in the description of this video to MLBTradeRumors.com. So yeah, this, uh, this tweet right here is actually pretty intriguing because the Orioles have been fairly quiet so far this offseason. Uh, you know, a lot of people, myself included, thought that this year with the success that the Orioles had last year in 2023, we're looking to build on that, uh, build on that and sort of go all in for 2024 and add some more pitching to the team uh, because last year in 2023, the pitching wasn't exactly the most high end. Uh, and with them losing Jack Flaherty this offseason, uh, Michael Lorenzen could be a definitely a nice replacement, but doesn't make this team that much better in my personal opinion. Uh, in regards to a championship contender. So uh, Michael Lorenzen this past year uh, split between the Tigers and the Phillies actually had himself a fairly solid campaign. Nothing spectacular. It was highlighted though with a no hitter thrown uh, with the Phillies, but his ERA honestly going over to Philadelphia wasn't that amazing. So I'm not too sure where Michael Lorenzen is going to be going and how much money he's going to be making. So this past year for Lorenzen, uh, as I mentioned before, a split between the Tigers and the Philadelphia Phillies. He actually made the All-Star game as well. Keep that in mind. 
Uh, he put up a 2.0 war season, 9 wins, 9 losses, an ERA of 4.18, 29 games played, 25 games started. I actually did record one save as well in his career or this past year. 153 innings pitched with 111 strikeouts and a whip of 1.209. So Michael Lorenzen has the potential to be a pretty solid like 3-4-5 guy in the rotation. As I mentioned before with Jack Flaherty leaving uh, the Orioles, he could be a nice replacement option for him there. But this team, in my personal opinion, needs to get a player like a Blake Snell or a Jordan Montgomery and get a player that could possibly be a possibly be an ace for this team in 2024 and not just fill out the rotation towards the bottom like Michael Lorenzen would be so no, so no disrespect to Michael Lorenzen he should get himself a pretty decent sized contract this offseason but as like a three or four or a five in the rotation it's not exactly what the Orioles need at this very moment I would say now they have to have one to replace Flaherty but this team should use that money and spend a little bit higher up spend elsewhere get a Montgomery get a a Blake now get whatever it takes uh, to be a championship team because this roster on paper is one of the best if not the best in all of baseball and they're only getting better so uh, Michael Lorenzen is going to be 32 years old in 2024 perhaps like a one to a three year contract could be in the best interest of a franchise and if you're Michael Lorenzen uh, going over and cashing in while your value is at pretty much an all-time high uh, coming off an all-star appearance this past year and a pretty solid season you know overall he could be cashing in financially speaking so uh, could Lorenzen be going to the Orioles I guess we'll find out so sticking with pitching but this time time shifting from the starting rotation to the bullpen. I want to talk about the Cubs and the Red Sox possibly going out and signing a uh, former Astros uh, relief pitcher, Ryan Stanek. So uh, here on the screen is a tweet from MLB Deadline News on Twitter or X, which says the Chicago Cubs and Boston Red Sox have expressed interest in free right-handed pitcher Ryan Stanek per Bob Nightingale. So uh, Ryan Stanek is at this point probably one of the better relief pitchers still available on the open market uh, with his former teammates um, Hector Neris actually signing with the Cubs. It probably takes the Cubs out of the picture uh, for Ryan Stanek so we can focus more um, on this report specifically. Uh, with the Boston Red Sox, who have been fairly quiet so far this offseason. I think a lot of teams out there could definitely use uh, Stanek, uh, Stanek services. Uh, he's a pretty solid player. Uh, this past year for Ryan Stanek in uh, Houston, he put up a 0.3 war season, three wins, one loss, a 4.09 ERA, 55 games played, uh, 50.2 innings pitch with, 50, with 51 strikeouts, and a whip of 1.243. So it's never a bad thing to add a player to your bullpen uh, that has a little bit of experience as well as championship experience. Uh, Ryan Stanek, of course, was a part of the 2022 World Series champion Houston Astros team. So if you were to go to a clubhouse uh, like the Red Sox, for instance, who are looking to get back into the playoffs next year, this could be a nice piece. Um, I think a nice place for him to go to actually would be uh, the uh, Texas Rangers. That could be a nice spot for him for staying in the, the, the Texas area. Uh, that could be a cool spot for him. But also, too, I would keep an eye on him possibly going uh, and joining with either the Yankees or the Mets, getting sort of that uh, experience. There could be a nice spot for him. I guess the Red Sox make a lot of sense as well. Uh, the Orioles could be a nice, you know, team for him to go to with Batista's injury. So yeah, Ryan Stanek is definitely going to have a market uh, with his former teammate Hector Neris signing a one-year contract for $9 million. Uh, I would imagine that Stanek gets a little bit less than that, but for a player who's still, um, you know, relatively in the prime of his career, I would say. He's going to be turning 33 in 2024, uh, as well as having championship experience. This guy could definitely be getting like a multi-year contract, perhaps. Probably likely, though, only a one-year deal. And if he wants to win a championship, he could be going to a team um, probably like the Rangers or the Dodgers or whatever. But if he wants to get the most money possible, then that's where Boston could come into play uh, and possibly give this guy a little bit more money than some other teams would be. So we'll keep an eye on former Astro Ryan Stanek, who's probably not heading back to the team. Uh, but now with Neris gone, I guess he could be heading back to the team. I guess only time will tell, uh, taking his talents to the Cubs. Uh, likely not anymore though, or the Red Sox. So for the next MLB news item for today, I want to talk about a player that is a former New York Yankees pitcher, that being Domingo Herman, possibly joining his former teammate Luis Severino and going cross town to the New York Mets organization. So uh, here on the screen is a tweet on Twitter or X from Mets Bat Flip, which says news. The New York Mets have talked with free agent right-handed pitcher Domingo Herman and his camp, though a source of the Yankees uh, cross on rivals are quote, the least favorites per Mark W. Sanchez. So According to this report, it doesn't seem super likely that Domingo Herman's going to be going to the Mets or the Mets have a ton of interest, but the two sides perhaps have talked to each other, and I guess there could be some dialogue on a contract potentially happening this offseason. Um, as I mentioned before with Luis Severino, a former Yankees player stayed in the city, uh, that being Severino, and signed a one-year contract uh, with, the, uh, with the Mets this year, despite having a pretty disastrous campaign last year in 2023 with the Yankees. So, uh, Domingo Herman's highlight last year was, of course, throwing a perfect game in Oakland, uh, which was a pretty cool moment, I guess, for the Yankees. 
uh, in Domingo Herman. So I uh, could be staying in New York this year and going to the Mets. I guess the only time will tell. This past year for the Yankees, uh, Domingo Herman put up a 0.7 war season, 5 wins, 7 losses, a 4.56 ERA, 20 games played, 180 innings pitched, with 114 strikeouts, and a whip of 1.077. So, uh, Domingo Herman's going to be 32 years old next year in 2024. Um, he has perfect game experience. He, of course, uh, knows the city of New York fairly well, having played there uh, his, his entire career so far uh, in the MLB, but also, too, uh, with Domingo Herman. He kind of sort of fits what the Mets have been doing this offseason in regards to getting players that perhaps their value isn't super high. Uh, but if you can get these guys to one year contracts and if you can pay these guys a reasonable amount uh, to bring them over for one year, if it doesn't go well, uh, David Stearns and Steve Cohen could be selling off some assets, getting back some prospects and going through the rebuilding process that way and sort of buying, I guess, young players uh, per se, uh, if you sort of want to look at it that way. So uh, could Domingo Herman be signing like a one year contract with the Mets? It's very possible. But according to this report, it's not super likely. But but the two sides have talked at the very least. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to leave all your thoughts down below regarding the 2023-24 MLB offseason in the comment section of this video. Have an immaculate rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.